He's your loose bullet. But he don't like it. He don't like y'all. Can I go ahead and tell you, you got an enemy, church. Yep. He don't like us and he wants to take us down, Sister Jenny. But God's telling us to not have a voice. Yes. Yes. All we got to do. And I hear God saying, listen. Listen. Yes. Listen to the voice of God. Yes. Don't matter what nobody says. You listen to God and do it the way that He tells you to do it. He might not tell you to do it like He told me to do it. Amen. But if He tells you to turn left, you turn left. Because He might have told me to go right. And if I'm not following you, that doesn't mean that God had not sent me in another direction at the right. time. Amen. You do no, Listen, I'm talking that individually now. Do it. What God tells you to do. If God says you need to repent, and you say, but God, I don't know what I've done. Repent! Right. If God said go over there and pray for that sister and she's got a smile on her face, she's stomping the floor and clapping and jumping up and down, you go pray for her anyway. Yeah. God's got a purpose for her. But God, she seems so happy. The devil's going to say, well, you go over there and you touch her, you decide what's going on between her. You better do what God tells you to do. Don't let the devil. I'm here to tell you, the devil's going to try to lie to you. It may come through someone else. It may come through a telephone. Just go ahead and say that. Or it might come over and see me. I don't know. But God, I'm here to tell you that the devil is going to try to lie to you. Because he wants to take us down, Sister Sandra. Yeah. If he can take us down one at a time, eventually he can get the whole church down. We can't let that happen, church. we got to do what God says do. And do it the way he says do it. And the way God tells us to love, what are we going to do? Hey, one another. I'm going to love you. Whether you like me or not, sister. I'm determined to love you anyway. Somebody said one time, said, Love the devil. <laughs> love the Praise devil. The Lord. I'm not saying you sister, so I'm saying I'm gonna love you anyway. And I know you're gonna love me anyway. Regardless. That's the way it's gotta be, church. It's gotta be that way, Sister Sandra. I'm a man. I will make mistakes. And so will you. But we've got to learn this one thing. We've got to learn that we're all of us are capable of making mistakes. We're all human. We all might not see things exactly alike. Or somebody might somebody might forget to shake your hand. Don't get mad at them. If the devil says, look at that hand and shake your hand, they got something against you. You go ahead and you tell them I ain't got nothing against you. I'm going to shake your hand. Come on, somebody. We gotta do this thing together. Come on. This ain't no one monkey show. Amen. Come on, y'all. Hear what I'm saying? Come on. I said we got to pull together, Sister Tanya. God spoke the same word to you this morning that He was speaking to me right there. He spoke it to me before you ever said a word. You're getting the same thing with the night that you got this morning. It may be different scripture. It may be different dialogue. It might be ministered in a different way, but it's still the same thing. Yep. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not, but I believe I did, brother Dan. If God wants us to tell us something twice in the same day, I believe He wants to get our attention. And I always said this, if God tells you something once, you need to listen. Amen. If He tells you something twice, you better take heed. If He happens to tell you the third time, you better do what He says. Yep. Because I know people that didn't listen to God. Maybe they wound up in a bad predicament. Yep. Amen, brother. Come on, brother. Thank you. Now hear me. Come on. Hear me. Bless the Lord. Give me a big old smile. Come on. Praise, praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank Thank you. Lord. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All you got to do is amen and smile. Look we'll you keep on going. Yep. Oh, I know I won't. I'll stop when the anointing stops. When God says amen, yes. enough, yes. that's when I quit. Praise the Lord. Because I'm going to obey what He says. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless him, Jesus. Somebody told me one time, another preacher told me one time. Bless you. <coughs> Good man of God. Love him with all my heart. Did you mad at me? He told me, he said, Brother John, can't you stand still when you preach? <laughs> no, I can't. When I'm talking to God and I'm preaching to the birds and rattlesnakes and frogs, I'm not standing still, y'all. I'm walking. I can't stand still hardly and pray. I gotta be on the move. Bless him, Lord. Yes. Hear what I'm saying. 
God wants me to stand still. And he says, Son, stand still. And you'll see me stand behind that cool pit and never move. But until he does, y'all have to keep me walking around. <laughs> Come on, brother, you preach. Let me tell you something. Well, George, you give me an incentive there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Encouraging me. Yeah. Some of y'all are smiling too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of you ain't though. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Lord sent me a little bit of money, y'all. And I, I hope nobody takes this the wrong way, because I promise you what I'm saying is just for the glory of God and that's it. Yes. Just Bless to help prove a point. But the Lord sent me some money, Sister Sandra. And He told me, He said, before you pay your tithes off of this, He said, there's something else I want you to do first with part of it. I said, okay, Lord. So I felt obligated to go a little further, Sister Sandy. So I reached out in my pocket. I got out of God's. <laughs> it wasn't out of me. It was money anyway. Right? Yeah, that's right. But I felt obligated to... <laughs> so I had to reach in my pocket a little bit. It wasn't a whole lot, y'all. I didn't go ahead and give you that. I mean, what I gave. But God had me. I felt obligated to reach in my pocket and get something, Sister Sandra. That's been about a month, three weeks, a month ago. This week, unexpectedly, I received a check in the mail for three hundred dollars. Amen. All I gave was fifty. Bless them, Lord. Y'all hear what I'm saying? <laughs> it pays. It pays. Yes. To do what God says to do. Yes, it does. It brother. pays. Yes. One time, I was in the service on Thursday afternoon at a church. A man came from the other side of the world and was holding a revival or was fixing to go back or whatever it was. But anyway, he needed $4,000. I had 20-something dollars in my pocket. Eric was still going to school in Nashville at that time. And I had three trips to make to Nashville that next week. And all I had was 20-something dollars. I remember 24, 26, whatever it was. I don't really remember. 20-something dollars. Y'all try to get Nashville three times on twenty something dollars. That's gonna take a miracle, ain't it? He can't get I might have could have squeezed two trips out of this if Erica didn't get hungry. <laughs> if she didn't want nothing to eat, <laughs> if she didn't want me to, <laughs> to stop them all the way. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? I might have might might have could have squeezed. Her. I'm sitting back on the back row and I'm squeezing my wallet. Lord says to me, put a dollar in an offering plate. Now there you go. Y'all got to remember this been a long time ago. Yeah. I said, God, I know a dollar ain't that much. But Lord, I don't have that much. A dollar is almost a gallon of gas. Or maybe it was, you know, I mean a dollar at that time went a little further than it does now. Gas was somewhat cheaper than it is now. Come on, and I thought, God, that'll get me a little bit further up the road. He might buy some for Eric or get her a drink or something. Or I don't have but I don't know, $24, $26, or whatever it was. God, I really can't spare a dollar. He spoke to me the second time. He said, put a dollar in that offering plate. I said, okay, Lord, here she goes. I didn't hold on string to it. I let her go and I forgot about it. And you see, that was on the Thursday evening. I didn't have to make the first trip to Nashville in the morning. Amen. That, three days later, for I'm sorry, Sunday, yep, three days later, on that Sunday, a man walked up to me, Sister Shirley, and stuck a hundred dollars in my front pocket. Yeah. I got back a hundred fold off that dog. I didn't have no trouble getting gas. I didn't have no trouble going to Nashville. I didn't have no trouble with anything. Amen, brother. <laughs> but what if? What if I hadn't to listen? What if I said, God, I'm hanging on to this dollar? I'd have been broke. You had two flats to blow me. <laughs> God wants to bless you. Amen. He does. <laughs> but you've got to listen. You can't be rebellious. You can't be stubborn. <coughs> I love all my kids and grandkids, y'all. Yep. Of course, those the ones that are little, they're too little right 
they'll be rebellious or stubborn and that kind of stuff, but I remember when Eric was, and I remember when David was, and tomorrow he is. I know it all my heart. Yep. But you know what really discourages you with your children? Y'all want me to tell you? It's when they become rebellious. Yep. It's when they become stubborn. <laughs> what I call hard in Yep. Mom. Don't you just get disappointed with them when they won't listen to us? <laughs> what do you think God right, feels right. about us when we do the same? You know what we do to our kids sometimes for being rebellious? Woo! Ah. Don't leave. Yep. Don't do that, but I don't know about that. He <laughs> said, Lord, we don't do enough of it. I don't do enough of it. But if we're going to chastise our children for being rebellious and for being hard headed and for being stubborn because we love them, what's God going to do to us? Is He just going to let us get by with everything? Come on, y'all. Come on. Y'all preach just a little bit. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God wants us to listen. He wants us to. to he do not want us practicing witchcraft or idolatry. That's right. Or iniquity. And Amen, the Bible bro. says if we're rebellious and stubborn, that's actually in the eye of God what we're doing. That's what it is. It's being stubborn. I didn't know, Brother Derek, all those times that the Lord wanted me to preach and I tried my best to get out the door before you got back there. Mm. I didn't know I was being rebellious. We want to know sometimes why things ain't going so well. Maybe we need to check things out. Lord, have yeah. I been rebellious? Have yeah. I been stubborn? Am I full of iniquity? Yeah. Because the Bible says if we're being stubborn, we're being... <coughs> Huh? Can I just tell y'all? Did I not? Did I need to tell you where that first Daniel yeah. fifteen? Ain't that what I said? Uh, chapter chapter 13. chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. Is that what I said? Yeah. Yep. Stubbornness and rebellion is as witchcraft, idolatry, and iniquity. Yes, it is. I didn't realize I was doing all those things, but kind of skittle out the door before 